Well, hey, welcome to the Dynamic Conveyor. And look at this beauty I got in this box. I want to show you guys what you can expect when you get your Dynamic Conveyor Dynacon system on your shipping dock. We're going to pop the top off of this box and show you exactly how to install everything, assemble everything, and what you can expect. So stay tuned to this. We're going to pop this top and get started. Well, all right, that was easy. Got the top popped off of that box, and now I'll show you where you can begin. This is a video instructional on how to do your assembly. Like I said, the most important thing you're going to see right up top is your owner's manual, instruction manual. Do not throw this away. A couple important things are in this envelope that you're going to need to know. You got the full instruction packet here. Tells you everything you need in a written format with some pictures included. Also, right inside, You'll see this little QR code. If you need it while you're assembling your conveyor, just pull this up on your phone. It'll take you to some different assembly features or you know different components of assembly. This video, though, we're going to have timelined on the bottom, so that if you all you need to know is how to lace a belt or how to build a leg set, you can easily find it on this full video. But you should watch the whole thing. It'll walk you through, and you can know what you're expecting when you're putting together your Dynacon system. All right, now the other thing in this envelope that's really critical, you get your blueprint. And these are basically what you're going to be building. Every one is going to be different depending on what you ordered. And that was a 17-foot conveyor in that. One little box had had 17 feet of conveyor, had the drive module, had all the leg assemblies, even had a roll of belt. Our guys in the shipping department are just masters of packing a lot of conveyor in a small space. So you get the most economical way of shipping, of course. So we're going to get started on that. You also get this little bit. It's a little hex bit that fits into all of our socket head cap screws. And this is what you'll be using to assemble most of your conveyor. You'll also need a couple of other little tools. And I like using these little screwdrivers, just one or the other. They're little flat heads. And they're important when you're lacing your belt to be able to pop your lacing rod out of the belt. So find yourself a little flat headed screwdriver such as that. The other thing you'll be needing, when you get to your leg assembly and start putting your leg assembly together, you'll also need a number two Phillips bit, such as this. Everybody has them. You've got plenty of them laying around in your shop. So get one of those handy. Now I'm going to show you how you'd lay out your modules according to your print. So again, our people in shipping don't just throw a bunch of random modules in a box. They put them together in as long enough segments as they possibly can that will fit in that box economically and also allow you a good idea of what you're going to be putting together. Now this should be simple and it should be a lot of fun and if you have two people doing it, all the better. You'll be, one of you will be able to be building legs while the other's putting the conveyor together or helping each other out. So let's get started. I'm going to lay this out on the floor so you see exactly how big this conveyor is going to be. Now I'm going to look at this print. Let me get my readers on a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to want to identify is my tailstock assembly. So this is where I'm going to start at this end. Now tailstock assembly is easy to identify because it's this one with these idle wheels on it. So this right here is my tail assembly. And I notice according to the print, it's got the tailstock, it's got one full module, and it's got this little half module. Right here it's identified on the print. My next portion of assembly is a lot of these long straight modules with a little angle module right at the very bottom. So I'm going to look for that particular piece and here it would be. This is the beginning of it. So this will be bolting on right to here, such as that. And I've got one, two straights. I'm looking for three, four, five, six. I need seven total. Well, here's four. So these will be going right here. Here's another one. This one will be going right here. Here's another one. So that one will be going right there. Get the idea. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm going to look for my final por portion of this conveyor, which will be a little angle coming to a big flat or big standard module, a couple little short pieces, and my drive. So this was pretty simple. I got this 
right like that. And then here's my drive system here. So. And my control box, like that. So you can see, that's quite a conveyor loaded in one little box. All right, next thing we're gonna accomplish here is show you how to put your leg sets together. Big old conveyor, it's gonna have several different size leg sets. These are a couple of the tall ones that are gonna go up on that end. I'm gonna to put together a mid-size module one that's gonna go somewhere right here in the middle for support. You'll get the idea once you see it. Pretty self-explanatory, but want to walk you through a few tricks. Your components that you're going to need are your two uprights, easy to identify. They all have the mounting screws already in the bottom, and those are what you're going to need to remove to put on your foot, your foot pads, like this, see? This is going to go here, the other one's going to go on the other side. You also got a couple of cross members, and these are what you'll notice right here in the middle here. So we'll install these crossbars. We'll install these foot pads, show you exactly how to do it. Once again, all your hardware is contained in the holes where they're going to come out and they're going to go right back in once you put it together. Watch this. You're going to need your Phillips bit, of course, and you're also going to need your 732nds round bit for this because you've got two different size fasteners or style fasteners. First thing I like to do is go right after these Phillips screws in the bottom of my uprights. So let me just pop those out. Just back them out, throw them off to the side, get them out of your way. Do the other one if you at the same time. Now if you got a table like I have here, it's really handy, I'm telling you. So that you could take your por portion right here that belongs on the bottom. You see already got screw holes in it. I'm started in these holes nice and gently. Uh, you know. Just make sure they're started straight in those holes. Give them a little couple spins as you're doing this. Yep, yep. Like that. Once you're pretty sure you got them started with your fingers, then you can switch over to your power tool, of course. Just gently run them in. Don't have to go too fast. Don't have to be overzealous with it. I like to get them all in sort of halfway or almost all the way and then just give them their final snug at the end. Just like that. So this leg's ready to have the crossbar installed. Let me quick put this other foot pad on this other leg and then we'll install some crossbars, show you how to do that. Take them through your holes here. Locate them in those Spots where they go in the bottom of the upright. Give them a couple of spins by hand so you make sure you got them started right, you know, before you put your power tool to it. Feeling good there. Ready to go. And there you are, you got a couple uprights finished. All right, now here's a crossbar. Next we're gonna put a crossbar. Join these two legs together. You'll see them in action displayed over here on these two we already did. Let me show you a few little tricks. This socket head cap screw, they're both located in either end of this. So they're already there right from the factory. You back them out, you position this, and you put them right back in. Let's do it. Again, if you have a nice tall table like this, it sure comes in handy because what I like to do is locate the first one with the third hole up from the bottom of this support. One, two, three, there's my hole. I can eyeball this as I'm pu putting it up in here. There we go. There, now that one's secure. Now it's nice to just tip this up, bring this across, locate your third hole from the bottom on this side. Slide them together. There. Now I've got essentially 
what I need for my next crossbar to go into. You know, depending on how tall your legs are, you're either going to have two, you might have three, you might only have one. It just depends on how tall your legs are. So once again, you could take these little socket heads out. Set your crossbar in between your uprights. Find a likely location that'll be somewhat within reason. Now you can always slide these up or down after the fact. It's always tricky with bifocals on, you know, you got to get used to them though, sooner or later. There we go. All right, this is the fun part. Now we're getting ready to put everything together. I'm going back to my print. Constantly refer to your print. Decide what you, you're going to do next. Now also in this package, there was these, some of these little stub legs that are going to go on your inboard, you know, your tailstock area. So I'm going to start with them. They come in a kit by the pair. They've got the hardware all in this kit and these little spacers along with it. So everything you need, of course, like everything we try to do, is all self-contained in one nice little package so you know exactly where all your components are going to go. So there's a set of legs. I already got a set over there. Let's get over here and figure out where they go and put them together. Looking at my print again, I'm noticing right where they belong. I sort of have some laid out here already. And let me show you what you're going to do with this. In this kit, you've got a couple of longer socket head cap screws. That's what's going to go through this this leg into our bosses here. You got a couple of these little spacers which are going to come in handy because this conveyor also gets some accessories attached to the top and you need that little bit of clearance room to be able to put your accessories on. So again just uh, line everything up where you believe there's according to the print everything goes. Make sure your little bolts are started. Now in our, our conveyor systems, once again, you don't need to think about over tightening things much. Matter of fact, if you've got a clutch on your drill, set it down to a moderate clutch feed. You don't ever want to over torque anything. So once you have everything lined up, you can just run these in like that. Step on up to your next little stub legs. Figure out where they're at. I'm going to flip this whole entire module over. Going to do my other sides. And what these little legs do is it essentially just keep the bottom of your conveyor off the floor. And since we notice that this belt also has flights on it, it gives your, you know, as your belt is coming around underneath this thing, it's keeping your belt from dragging on the floor too. All right, cool. Looking pretty good. Now let me show you some cool stuff, man. We're ready to start building. So I've got my conveyor. I've got my next pet piece section. And you'll notice with the Dynacon system, like we have been talking about the whole time, these two screws here are just in place holders. As you're putting these modules together, you're removing screws from here, and they're the ones that belong right here. That's going to attach this con conveyor section to this one. As you keep moving up the line, it's like, hey, here's two more. What are they for? These two come out and go through here that attach these conveyor sections together. So the cool thing, easy thing to do, you don't have to take these dog bones all the way off. You just have to loosen one side just a little bit. Give yourself some wiggle room, like this. Because these, these dog bones fit over these bosses here. They're what's giving you entirely all your support, okay? Screws are just sort of intended to hold them there, keep everything up off the floor, lock everything into place. So then, without even loosening the bottom screws at all, you can just start popping things together like this. Again, back these out.
drop them right up in these holes. Have your drill set moderate again. Run them in. I'm going to tip my conveyor up a little bit so I can see what I'm dealing with. Over here, my other two screws are right on the other side, right where those other ones were. I'm going to take them out. And I'm going to put them right in this other dog bone, right there. So cool. I got these two sections put together. I'm ready to start on the third. Now here's where it comes in real handy to go get help in hand. All right, let's get going. I got Chris here to help us out. He's one of our design engineers. Just makes it easier with two guys around. And we're going to be try to be smart about this and use gravity as our advantage. So what, what I'm going to do again, I'm going to need these two little bolts. I know I'm going to need them. I got these two here. And these two are going to go here and here. I got two more on the other side. Might as well just take them out while I got my drill in reverse. And while I got my drill in reverse, I'm going to back off on this dog bone again just a little bit. Not all the way, just to give me some wiggle room. We're going to be smart about this. Yeah, lower it down a little bit there, bud. Great. Now I can just pop it in together. Just like that. Get everything all lined up. Now I can run my drill the other way. back here. Now from looking at a print, Chris is going to push down on this over here. I'm going to pick up on this and we're going to get ready to get this next leg assembly on. So here's that leg assembly we built earlier. Chris, if you could hold that up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it over in. According to the print, it's going to go right up in there. Now, on these uprights, how you attach your conveyor modules to your uprights. Got another little kit, comes with your legs. And what's in that kit are a couple of these two black fittings that go right over these bosses on your conveyor. So this is where they'll fit, right over the top of this. And the other one on the other side. Same way. You also get a couple of longer screws, self-explanatory. Once we start lowering this into the frame, go ahead. Keep going till those legs even out on the floor. How about right there? I'm gonna find a good looking locating hole and my drill. That's that. Step over here on the other side, make sure they're somewhat even. Down a little bit. Up a little bit. There we go there. Now after you get that done, also on that little kit, final two pieces for the top of your conveyors. For these top little fittings that go on top of your leg assembly. And that's all you got to do once you got it to this point. Now let me show you how to put the cross strap supports on. These are your cross support bracing that ties in from here to your main frame of your conveyor and gives you a lot of nice rigidity, a lot of nice support. I've got a short set which goes to my short legs. I got two long sets. I know we're going to go to my long legs so that's how I identified which ones I'm going to need. Take them all apart. They're already pre-assembled so that you don't have a whole lot of fooling around on them. These little bolts are captured in these holes with a little rubber uh, or a little plastic washer so they don't fall out. But you got different positioning holes where you could find out where's the best place for you to put them. Now what this does is, this little fitting here is going to go inside of this tube and as you tighten this, this is going to turn sideways and lock this portion into this tube. I'm going to come over here to this hole, run this bolt in. Now here's the trick with these. When you look at these, you're going to see that it's got the threaded bolt coming through this nut. Where you want to start is with this all the way backed off. So it's at least flush or maybe a little bit under. 
okay? And then as you swing this over to your tube, poke it in there good, good and tight, and then as you tighten it down, you want to visually watch that cam flip over 90 degrees, all right? And that's what tells you that you are absolutely 100% secured. You just want to watch that that cam flips. And it all, you know, it's pretty much all starts with having this bolt flush with that nut, getting it located, and then just easily tightening this up while you watch that cam rotate. Let me put the one on the other side. So now we're about halfway done. We're going to start on the next upper section, show you how to finish this conveyor, put the belt on. We'll be running some stuff in a minute. All right, it's getting easy now. I don't have to get down on my knees much anymore. So let's just keep going. Again, we're just going to repeat the whole process. I'm going to need these two. I already know that, right? There's two on the other side I'm going to need. Take them out. I'm going to loosen up on this backbone since I'm standing here and my drill's in reverse, right? I'm going to grab this module that I know goes on next. According to my print, I can pop it in that front one, get it located on this back one, run my drill the opposite direction to tighten it up. And see, even without any bolts in this front one, like I was telling you, these bosses are, are reset into this, into this bone here, and that's what's doing all your support. So all these are intended to do is hold it all in place. Don't ever want to over torque them. Just run them in nice and easy. Okay, once again, I'm putting my drill in reverse because I'm going to need these two. Now I'm going to go and have a look at my print because I might be able to put another leg set underneath this area someplace. So let me take a quick look. And yes, my print shows me that I need a leg assembly right on the last, last module here located off of this boss right there. All right, cool. Let me get that leg. Once again, we're going to follow the same process that we used on the other one. I need another kit. Here's this kit again. This is what's containing, just like on our lower leg set, we had to have these little fittings. Those flip over the bosses. We have to have two of those. We got to have end caps for the top, and we have to have these two long bolts. There you all are. First of all, let me just start with these two. So once again, these slide down into the tube and they fit over the top of those bosses, just like that. Now let me figure out where this is looking good. Right about there looks pretty good. I'm, I'm just sort of flexing my conveyor and making sure everything's staying nice and square and this is rendering some support, okay? So that's pretty much how you do it. You know, it all depends on how your floor is configured and if you got any, you know, great big whoop de doos or whatever. That's why these things are, are built to be so adjustable just to any situation that may arise. Okay, you want to make sure you got them both about the same. So, you can also count the holes down from the top. Perfect. Let me tighten this one up. There, got those in place. I can now put these little, little plastic caps on the top of here if I want. And they just snap right in. Then, of course, as we're repeating with our strap bracing, right?
All right, just got this back cross bra brace on. Got this cross brace in here, support strap. Now I'm gonna get ready and I'm gonna put this next assembly of modules on. Once again, same old thing. You're gonna get used to it by now. Back these screws out, bolts, socket head cap screws, they call them. You're gonna need them. You're gonna need them out of here. All right, well, we just finished up with this conveyor, assembling the whole thing. We put on our straps, we put on our other crossbar. One thing when you're running your last crossbar up in here, you have to put it in sort of on an angle. So it's just handy to loosen up this top bolt a little bit so it allows your frame to flex to put that in. Okay, here's our control box. Now it just drops in on this dovetail fitting here. And you can mount this wherever you want, wherever it's comfortable for you, either side. And this is what your control box looks like. We'll show you how to operate that in a bit. But right now we're just going to walk around the back and I'll show you how to put a belt on. So, we've got our conveyor all fully assembled. we got our power box powered up, so we're ready to run our controller and run our sprockets. I'm coming back here to this back end. You see I still have my bit here. I've got this little screwdriver that I'm going to use for my belt lacing rods. That's all I'm going to need to run this belt. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, I take off these two screws. That one, that one, and this center one. And you'll notice this center one is a slight bit longer than these other two. So that's where it goes, back in the center. Once you have those off, you can pop this little piece right off. This is where your belt path is. You know how it floats back and forth? We got other videos all about this, but I'm still going to go over it in a minute here. Take the other side off just the same way. Now let me get my roll of belt over here. We ship every conveyor with a roll of belt, of course. Well, you know. And uh, this is what we're going to use on this specific conveyor. Sometimes they come in multiple lengths depending on how long your conveyor is. <coughs> Let's find our little area where we can get this opened up. This looks like a good spot. I'm going to turn my belt around. All right. This is also if you got another hand, this is, makes it a lot easier if you got a couple of people. But the whole idea is, here's your first lacing rod up in here. And these lacing rods have a little head on one end, sort of like a nail. That's what this little screwdriver is for, is to help pry that out of this pocket these lacing rods fit into. One of the most important things when you start running your belt Make sure that you, you have a lacing rod through this front section because you don't want these little sections to flip down and maybe jam up somewhere in the whole process. So get your belt sort of lined up. Yeah, let me get this a little bit better. I'm going to want to give myself some slack. See, if you had another person, they'd just stand here and unroll it while you were stringing it. 
but let's just give this a go. It should move nice and easy, just like this is. All right, well, we got the belt all the way up to the top. We're getting it ready to engage on your sprockets up here. And you'll notice how our sprockets have a little back and forth action in them. You don't want them riding up tight to one E-clip or the other. You want them engaging in your belt in the correct position, though. So these sprockets, you're able to move back and forth, pull on your belt, and get it so that it engages perfectly within the sprocket teeth, okay? Once you got that done, I've got power to this machine. Here's my control box now. So I've already set my speed really low. I don't want to go really fast to begin with, but I'll come over here and I'll turn it on. And you'll be able to see the belt is coming around. I'm speeding her up a little bit. Everything's sounding good to me. You know, I still have my hand here if I want to shut it off real quick. But now it sounded really good. And it's scrolling around. And I'm watching it back here too. Same time. I don't want anything to jam up back here while I'm feeding my belt, so that plastic's got to go. And what I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to pay attention down here to this lower end. Because as soon as my belt starts coming out this bottom end, I'm going to want to shut my machine off because that's where I'm going to lace my belt at. So I've got to be near my control since it's removable and I need a good eyeball on this. I'll just stand right here and be able to watch when that belt starts coming out. Gonna be pretty soon. There she is. See how that worked? So, I'm gonna put my control back up on here. We always ship these out with a little extra belt. You always need a little bit extra. You're gonna have a few links left over. You're, that'll give you some extra rods too, you know. You, everything you're ever gonna need down the road. So now what you do is you got a bunch of belt here, got a little bit of belt here, right there. So now I could decide where I want to lace it. So when I lay it over like this, I can see exactly where I want this to go. Very cool. You know, I could step it down to this link, but since this is such a long conveyor, I'm going to take it right out at this link here. So I could come over to this other side with my little screwdriver. And again, we've got more detailed videos showing you how to do this, and I know you probably you can't see it at all from that angle. So let me get this rod out of here. Just be gentle, and don't worry if you damage this rod, because like I said, you're going to have plenty of them. Right? So now i got some leftover little section of belt. I can bring this up. Gently get these pieces to start to knit together. Take my rod. Start feeding it through. Make sure all my spots are connected. Oh. There. Now I'm going to poke on this little head, get it ready to get it back detented into this little pocket it came out of. Just like that. Now this is where you'll put up, you put your side plates back on. It's just pretty much that simple. Now I can notice that my everything's looking good. Come back over here. Make sure my belt is riding in my belt path accurately. There she goes. There she goes. Put these back in. Again, you don't have to torque this. Make sure you back her off a little bit, about halfway, just to get these all to hold into place. Same with the other side. There she goes. All right. All 
right, let's start her up. Here we go. Turn it on. Take a look at it. Run the speed up a little bit. Sounds really good. Now you know what? You just saw a 17 foot conveyor get put together by an old man with moderate mechanical skills and very basic tools. And when you look at this thing, this is your standard Dynacon system. There's modules you could add to it, make this longer, you could make that longer, you could make it shorter, you could turn it into a flat if you wanted to. The accessories available are just various and many. There's hoppers, there's chutes, there's extensions to these walls. You can get covers over the top. You can get a metal detector for it. You can get different size flights and everything is modular in this system. I hope you learned something. I hope I was helpful to you. Get yourself a Dynacon conveyor. Give us a call if we can help.